Throw things at the director. Joe's a one-man workhorse over here because we, we don't have any more men. Um, I had to take on a lot of different roles and I really don't ever want to have to do that again because um, other jobs are just fit and best for the people who are doing them and you really can do your best if you're concentrating on one aspect of a feature film and when you have to concentrate on 10 or 12 different aspects such as shooting the film, directing, lighting, sound, it could take away from the directing and stuff because you're kind of spreading yourself too thin but unfortunately under the circumstance that's the way this one had to be done. Uh, yeah there was no crew to speak of. Uh, Joe was consistently the crew and then we would just jump in here and hold a boom or listen to the sound. We had a couple of other guys that came in uh, sporadically and did uh, crew work. Working with Joe Valeni was, was a great experience. Um, I liked uh, being able to just stand back and watch him work. And I know he's a really dedicated person in any project that he works on. It was fun. I mean, uh, he, wasn't that, he wasn't demanding. He was easy to get along with. Uh, he's a great, he's an actor's director, I think. Joe kept the set humorous. We always had a good time. We laughed. Morale was high. Every day you get to the set, you look, you look forward to a, a fun day. No, we had a good time. And uh, I, would, uh, I would do it again if the money is there, that's for sure. Um, uh, if Joe can ante up the, you know, the greenbacks, I'll be, I'll be there for him you know, anytime. I knew his work ethic. I knew um, how dedicated he was and how, um, how goal-oriented he is. And I think that's just inspirational. I mean, I just watched him, and then I was able to just take that and put it into my own performance. It was a great experience. He's very driven. He's a good guy to work with. He's pleasant. He goes with the flow. He tells you what he wants, and everything gets worked out. No matter how ridiculous things got on the set with casting, like, uh-oh, uh we need this part. We can't shoot this, this scene until we, we get somebody to play this part. It would work out. Uh, I'd have to say my most memorable experience was after the first roll of film that we shot. I um, got a print done of it so I could test out the camera, see if uh, everything was working properly and how it looked. And I went to a place called Magno Sound in New York City and they showed the print on a big screen like in a little mini theater. I think it was like a 200 seat theater. And seeing that footage on the big screen and stuff was probably, it was amazing because like you were actually seeing your work as if people will see it in the theater. My most memorable experience on the film was actually the day that Joe asked me to be in the film. I was, <laughs> I was ecstatic. Um, and understanding that it was a, you know, an independent film, you know, there wasn't a big budget, but just the fact that I'm such a fan of movies and that Joe was working on this project and he says, Barbara, I have a part for you if you'd like it. And I went, I'm there. That would be an exercise in sleep deprivation for me um, in considering legal action. Most memorable experience. Uh, I would have to say uh, getting up at the crack of dawn every uh, morning that we were going to shoot with Joe and uh, getting everything ready uh, for the long day and uh, Dolly preparations, packing up his car. Oh. I don't remember much. Uh, I had a lot of hallucinations due to not sleeping much. Uh, I may have mentioned that earlier, but uh, I saw things that weren't there. Loser. Last time you slept, please? Uh, hours and minutes, exact. That was about 22 hours ago. Hardest part about shooting the film was the time, like, uh, it took over a year to shoot. Uh, well, you know, I didn't sleep much. Um, <laughs> that actually probably was the hardest part because everybody's schedules was a little bit conflicting, so. Uh, to get everybody together to do the shoot, um, you know, certain sacrifices were made, and uh, we're all good with that. You know, we wanted to do this uh, movie. I want to direct a film, but I need a script first. You need a script first, right? And then you'll do a film. Yes. Yeah, I am uh, similar to Jared in many ways. Uh, obviously, our love of filmmaking. Uh, Jared wants to be a director. I love acting. But again, I want to say that uh, Jared is also an awful lot like uh, Joe. 
uh, being the writer of uh, Lying Beside You, I think uh, Jared is, is based on Joe, Joe's aspirations. He wants to be a director. Uh, so I did a lot of research, maybe without Joe realizing it, watching Joe, seeing how he is, even on the set, uh, right before scene, I could look at how Joe was acting and be like, that's Jared right there. I gotta, I gotta do that. The character of Jared does have similarities to me, but it's not all me. I did not lie on my resume, I promise. Um, but I think Jared's mentality towards life uh, when he's walking with Jessica on the beach and he's talking about the house, the dog, the white picket fence and stuff, those are, those are some of the dreams I have. And of course his dreams of becoming a director and stuff, those are what I went through. And the funny thing is there really was a mentor program that I applied for and didn't get in. And I wondered to myself, if I had just fudged my resume just a little bit, would I have had a better chance? So that's where the whole concept came from. There are similarities between Jennifer and myself. Um, and I think just the simple fact that um, we love movies, I think that would be number one, obviously, since she's the teacher of a men film mentorship program. Um, uh, somebody who's kind and, and very helpful, uh, who wants to help students achieve their goals. A little about my character. Uh, well, he's a, he's a guy that doesn't say much. What he feels gets down on paper because he's a writer. When he does say something, he's got some anger he has to get out or something because that's the only time you really hear anything out of him is when he gets angry. Otherwise, he's calm and, and uh, just a gentle person. As soon as the camera stops, I'm the first one to bust out with a joke or a laugh. I mean, I am not, by far, not a mute, that's for sure. I'm very much like that character. I get a lot of women. Uh, I have a black book here that's filled. No, that's not true. Um, that was fun because it is different from me. You know, I've had a girlfriend uh, for almost four years. So to play a guy who's out there playing in the field and you know trying to be a smoothie with the ladies and everything, you know, that was uh, that was fun to kind of let loose like that. Uh, but honey, I would never do that. You know, in real life, this was all make believe. She's a the, the mentor of a film program. Um, a person, I, I feel that she was a person who uh, wanted to be a filmmaker, um, never quite got the opportunity to be as successful as she wanted to be, but decided to take her experience and teach others. No. Cop with the dog okay, ready, somewhere over there. Oh. All right, this oh, yeah. is a real yeah. run. It's a real toque. Shot, yes. roll okay. sound. This is history. Ready. Hold on. Say when. Roll it. Speed. And audio slate. Scene 47A, take one. And camera rolling. Clack it. And action. I was so nervous. I didn't think I was going to be able to do it. You looked anything <laughs> but nervous. Hey, speaking of nerves, I heard uh, Jennifer Manning's going to be on the set tomorrow. You nervous? I'd be lying if I said no. What I really wanted to do with this film was for the low budget it was, I still wanted to make it look technically sound. Um, so what I did was I constructed a dolly and it was just made from wood and wheelbarrow wheels and some galvanized pipes and stuff and it provided us with a lot of nice fluid dolly shots. And what that did was give the film, it gave the film life, it gave it movement, it wasn't static shots, it, it kept the film alive. Close it? Yeah. We were um, shooting at Point Pleasant Beach, and we were on the end of the pier doing the Billy Richardson scene where uh, Jared and Billy Richardson are having their discussion, and a foghorn kept going off every 30 seconds. So it's something on the set, something to right, break like, something up that we have to deal with. Because the weather was really bad. It was bad fog out for the ships to come into the inlet. And so this foghorn would go off, and it'd be right in the middle of the scene every, every time. Every 20 seconds, I think. It was like a cycle. Every 20 seconds. I hear your talented young director potential. Go back and do that. I hear your talented young director. Sounds like a dilemma. Recognize your talent. What you have, and rely on that. 
See, on the next film, I want enough money to be able to stop that foghorn. What are you doing here? Oh, I did a film with Jennifer Manning two years ago. She told me she was coming out here for your shoot. And since I was nearby, I figured I'd drop by for a look. The karaoke scene was probably one of my most favorites when I was editing because it really ties in the music and the video together. And Teresa McKenna has a fantastic voice. And when she sang the song Love in Disguise, I mean, that is just such a point in the movie where you really feel, you really begin to fall in love with Jessica. And as you can see, so does Jared. The funny thing about this was we actually wrote the song the night before we shot the scene. We knew we originally weren't supposed to be in the bar for another two weeks, but the bar owner called up and said, well, it's Memorial Day two weeks from then, so I have to get you in right away. We had 24 hours to write the song and record it, have Teresa learn it, and then go in there the next morning and have her sing the song, lip sync the song, and really pull it off, and she did a fantastic job. You know, directing is my dream, that's what I want to do, and I can't wait for the day when I can actually go to a film and just direct and not have to do all the other jobs and stuff, but that, but that would be it, directing. I'm lying beside you, and you don't know who I am.